I, I would just reiterate one other point, though, on this happy Independence Day, that if any, uh, <laughs> if any EU nationals want to make a long-term commitment to this country, they are very welcome to apply for UK nationality. We love to have people who want to make a success of their British identity. Right, and do you think that in itself would be quite an enticement, if you like, for people here, and also a guarantee that they would have enough time either to build up settled status or, as Dan Hanna said, apply for British citizenship? I think there'll be some people on Dan's side of the argument during the referendum campaign who will definitely not be happy with that. And I think this comes again to the point of what did people vote for? Lots of people voted or thought they were voting for reducing the number of EU migrants immediately. We saw the number of hate crimes going up. We saw yeah, lots we of EU... That is well, hang, did. hang on, let's just be clear on that. There that was a, hang on, Dan Hannah, there was a spike shortly after. No, there was not. The, no, there, we, because we had uh, the statistics mm -hmm. people on about it. They said there was a spike... Obviously, it's hey, impossible. Obviously, it's impossible. Hang on. Sorry, Obviously, it's impossible to relate. No, I'm going to let you come. I'm going to let you come back on it. But it was related. It came after the EU referendum. They don't know, of course, whether it was as a direct result or whether these people would have actually committed those crimes. But there was a spike and then it came down. Right. Let's just let's just analyse what this supposed spike was. There is a website where people are invited to log on and advertise that they've been victims of hate crimes. OK, there were an extra 31 complaints in a 96 hour period. Right? None of which led to an increase in prosecutions, several of which were complaining about Nigel Farage. I mean, these were, these were people letting off steam. The, the police press release said this should not be read as a 57% increase in crime. It is just this reporting mechanism. And yet for a year, we've had people making this ludicrous claim that there was this, this sudden rise in hate crimes, which be bears no relation to the... Right, I mean, just, but anyone the watching this programme, look around you. Does it seem plausible that we've had a 57% rise? There were, there were more complaints, but I take it we broke down those statistics at the time and, and the police. I'm in not some well. Cases, we'll have to have a look complaints. at that again. Do you accept that, that claims like that though are incendiary? The, the specifics of that. Um, I, what I should have said is there is increased animosity towards EU I migrants. That. Right, but I that, know. I know lots of people not. anecdotally who've been told yeah, to go home don't since. The, Trump no, but, figures, but they do. People who are walking down the road. People who are on the tube being told, "I voted to get rid of you. I voted so you'd go home." It happens. In the immediate and it may aftermath, not happen in the everywhere, but it Nicole. happens. There were three events that were held up as proof of what an intolerant country we'd, we'd become. There was an anti-immigration demonstration in Newcastle, there was a, a supposed attack on a tapas bar, and there was this famous anti-Polish graffiti. It's now turned out that the tapas bar was a burglary, that the idiots in Newcastle had been having that demonstration every Saturday for more than a year, and that the supposed uh, anti-Polish graffiti was actually by a poll against a Eurosceptic... You didn't frankly have the balls to put country before party.